December can be the make or break month in the salon and spa industry, but there are ways you can screw it up. And on today's podcast, we're gonna make sure that you have an amazing December. Salon owners are some of the most amazing people on planet Earth. The only problem is sometimes their hearts are so big and they give so much of themselves to their staff and guests that it creates unintended consequences. Our goal is to change the industry by elevating the way the rest of the world sees salons, spas, and barbershops and give it the credibility that it truly deserves. This is the Salon Owner Evo Revo Show. Welcome, welcome back to the show. If you are a first time viewer or listener, do me a favor and say first timer in there. Uh, welcome to the Evo Revo podcast where we talk not only about salon ownership and the salon ownership industry or the salon owner industry, uh, but today we've got some amazing crew on the show. As always, I'm joined by Mr. Doug Campbell. What's up, Doug? How's it going? Dude, glad to have you on. Coming into the busiest month of the year for the salon spa industry, holidays, November and December are magical times of year for the industry. Uh, and excited to be talking about that today with you and also with our guests. Uh, our guests today come all the way from Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, Manhattan, <laughs> Kansas. Said appropriately, ladies, what is going on? We have got uh, Lindsay Lowe and April Jacobs from Platinum and Company from Manhattan, Kansas. Did you like how I teased the Manhattan in there for you guys? You guys like that, love right? Love it. Love it, love it. Yeah, Manhattan, Kansas, where these two run an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary salon out there and just do some really incredible things. So, so glad to have you both on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. So glad to be here. Yeah. So guys, I mean, look, we're going into the busy season where people are going to, you know, be practically like falling out of their chair to like dead at the end of the day for crying out loud. I mean, I've seen you, we've all seen those memes, right? Where like the salon industry as a whole, everybody shares the same meme every holiday season where it has like 10 hairdressers like passed out on the floor and it's like my life every day through the month of December, right? There's no appointments, everyone wants to get in. People are upset because their hair's not perfect for the holidays. I'd love to chat with you guys about uh, what are some of the things you guys do to prepare to make sure that your staff stays sane during the holiday, that you stay sane during the holiday. And by the way, if you guys have other helpful topics out there that's watching or listening, Listening right now, do me a favor and type them in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys do. But April and Lindsay, let's hear some of your ideas. Yeah. So I mean, gosh, there's so many things going into it. I think one of the first things that we like to do is just plan out what our schedules are going to look like as a team. Yeah. Um, right when it gets started, just so that you have clear intentions when it gets started. Like, hey, I am going to probably pick up some extra hours, but this is what it's going to look like. Um, and then really like setting people up for success before that with pre-booking and then beyond December with pre-booking are some of the key things that I think help set it up in the beginning. What, so what do you think are some of the biggest mistakes that salon owners make? I mean, with their own schedule, with their staff? Cause I, I mean, like you said, I, I think people like, people know that they should pre-book, but they often don't, right? It's like people are just like, ah, okay, I made it through a guest, see you later. And so some of the simple things become completely forgotten about. What are the biggest mistakes you've seen, or maybe if you sell yourself out, what are some of the biggest mistakes you guys have made as salon owners in the holidays in previous years? I'm sure there's a couple. Just saying yes too much, like, yes, okay, and adding to your schedule and letting you have like, you know, you end up with a 12 hour day and then not having time when you need to be in the office or with your family or whatever. So that can easily stress you out. Totally. And just, just so we know, because I actually didn't ask this up front, just so people get an idea of what Platinum & Company is all about, how long have you guys been around? How many staff do you have? Tell us a little bit about your your uh, your salon company that you guys have right now. Yeah, so we've been Platinum & Company for almost 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, woohoo! And we have about um, 20 staff right now. Awesome. And, um, you know, we have grown into new locations a couple of times, actually. And um, we're just rocking it out here in the Little Apple. I love it. In the <laughs> Little Apple. I'm <laughs> so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, so other mistakes you guys have made. Uh, you know, as you were talking about that, April, you said overbooking yourself. That, that's killer, right? What other things have you screwed up as salon owners? Like, have you guys ever run a promotion that didn't work? Or what are some other mistakes you guys have done? Like, what? tell me, I want, to, I want the dirt today. Yeah, so, I mean, really, I think a lot of it is, like, you get so rushed during that month, too, that you're not even focused on your key foundational things, like your consultation. 
So, um, you know, creating that vision with your guests of what you want their hair to look like, you know, not just during this visit, but their next several visits helps set you up for those next pre-books that you have going on. Um, and so a lot of the times, like when you get rushed, that seems like an easy area to overlook or just, mm -hmm. you know, drop off. And so just staying really intentional, having those, you know, team meetings, huddles before the day gets started so that you can set your intentions for the day and just really stick to them and keep an elevated guest experience so that that doesn't drop during the month of December because you're so overworked. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a big deal, right? Is like, again, it's like all the basics fall out, right, Doug? I mean, isn't that kind of how that works? Is like all the things that you think you should do, you're like, I totally nailed it. December, it becomes kind of a, you know what show. What What are your thoughts about that, Doug? Yeah, I mean, it's, you can go from, it's, I'm just busy, so I'm just getting through busy. Uh, but to Lindsay's point of being intentional about how you're doing it, I think as a salon owner, one of the biggest things, and the, uh, the ladies can uh, chime in on this, is it, controlling the mindset uh, of, you know, what are we about, what are we doing, you know, about the experience. Uh, so that's one of the things, you know, we've always talked about, getting real intentional about whether promotions, everything else, are we, is everybody coming with the same mindset or is everybody coming in with the mindset of, oh my God, I'm busy because oh my God, I'm busy yeah. is very contagious uh, around the, inside the salon. So I'd love to get their take on what are y'all doing for uh, controlling mindset in your space? Totally, yeah. So, I mean, that is a really great point because just in our industry, like we take on people's head trash all the time, you know? Great way to say um, it, yep. <laughs> and there's a lot of that going on right now. I don't know if you guys know that there's a pandemic going on, what? but- <laughs> Right you know, news, you know. and gentlemen, straight from Manhattan, Kansas, <laughs> from the Little Apple. Kansas, Kansas. <laughs> so we got extra stuff going on, and you know, people are worried about the future and about all this stuff, and they still want to look good, they still want to feel good, and so like, how do we listen to them? How do we support them in those conversations? But then, how do we leave them here so that we're not, you know, intermingling that in our personal lives and just totally feeling drained? And so, I think just having a really good foundation of support as a team for each other and like debriefing things that may go wrong um, and even just debriefing stuff when somebody puts something really heavy on you like how do you walk through that conversation how do you still have compassion for that person but still leave it you know at your station when you go home for the day That's so yeah. Super good. And I, and I, and I, that's a, I think a really, good really topic, topic I think for us to be paying attention to is how do we make sure that as we're sitting with uh, that guest, you, to your point, you said you leave it at the station. How, what are some tips that you give your team? Because you guys mentioned you do daily huddles, you do some things like that to kind of talk about that. How much of that daily huddle is used to talk about that kind of stuff? Or is it just like, hey, sell more retail and gift cards, get on it? Like, what? I mean, I, I hope those are not your, your huddles, and I assume they're not, ladies, because we've been working with you guys for a long time. But talk to me about what are some of the things you guys bring up in huddles to help mindset get right. Definitely. Um, usually we start with something positive, a win or something that they're looking forward to. Um, we even have a cup of like popsicle sticks that have questions um, to kind of like change up the conversation, but in a positive way to kind of set the tone for the day. So they do have goals but it is just setting the tone in a positive note. Talk, talk to me about these popsicle sticks. You're gonna have to explain that one a little bit more because I don't think everybody's got popsicle sticks for conversation starters. So, you know, it's like questions that you wouldn't maybe normally ask people on a daily basis, but um, just getting to know them. Um, what are some of them like? Yeah, so like our team created them and it basically just helps you go from like the surface of a conversation to really get to know somebody deeper. So like, I mean, some of them are simple, like if you could travel anywhere right now, where would you go? And some of them are like pretty deep personal questions, you know? Um, and it just like helps us all feel like more connected to each other. And anytime anybody thinks of anything, they can write it down and put it in there. Um, and then once they're done, they, you know, every morning or every start of every shift, they just grab something out of there and just get really connected with each other. And I think it just helps you realize like how much you can serve each other daily when you kind of go below the surface with somebody and you start paying attention to more things like, oh gosh, April needs help, you know, she's behind. Or, you know, you don't, it takes you out of being just focused on yourself and makes you focus on each other a lot too. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah. a, a really good point on 
controlling that morning meeting because you're setting the tone for the day. As if if you're not intentional about that part, it can turn those morning meetings can easily turn into, pardon my French, but a bitch fest. Yeah. Um, you know, where everybody's just you know, and if you allow that to happen, then you set the tone. So I love the yeah. popsicle sticks. I love the just be, truly being intentional about that. That thing that starting our day is intentionally positive or helping us to go deeper and to care about each other at a, at a higher level. So we're not allowing the other stuff to come in. So I think that's awesome. That's good. And by the way, I want to ask about this because I think a lot of people uh, get into this. And by the way, I want to take a quick break because we got to take a quick break before we uh, we do this next section here. Uh, but Helen, if you're still watching, she asked the question. She said, do you charge for consultations? I think this is a great question, especially during the holidays, because her question is uh, she's had a lot of free consultations that they come for the appointment, but they don't show. And I think cancellations during the holidays can really get under people's skin. So when we come back, we're going to answer that question with April and Lindsay from Manhattan, Kansas all after this quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, so we were talking about this, right? Is this idea of cancellations, because holy cow, nothing says I'm glad I scheduled a 12 hour day, like whoops, three appointments canceled, right? Like that is brutal. And I think, uh, you know, Helen asked this question, by the way, Helen, let us know where you're where you're on from, like what city are you from? Uh, but like, you know, how do you guys deal with that, April and Lindsay? And maybe it's about consultations and like, do you guys charge for those? Let's start with her actual question. But then I wanna know, you know, how do you prevent cancellations during the holidays? Because that's such a brutal time and everybody's begging to get on the schedule. So how do you make sure in your salon at Platinum and Company that doesn't become a huge issue? Yeah, so, I mean, I think there's multiple layers to that question. Uh, first of all, we don't charge for a consultation. Um, a consultation to us is just like, you know, to get to know each other and see how we can serve the, our guests best. And yeah. so, you know, we want them to experience, you know, any moment that they can in our salon. So we don't charge for that. Um, we do reserve uh, appointments with a credit card and let them know about our cancellation policy um, on the phone. Typically, you know, I mean, now it's kind of a wild card because obviously if somebody's sick, we don't want them in our salon. Sure. And so we'll waive that, you know. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll waive a cancellation fee if somebody's like, by the way, I have a fever. You're not like, all right, Susan, I'm charging your car. Deal with it. I mean, like to the <laughs> point, exactly. there's some grace that's given in there, right? But it's okay. So you don't charge for consultations, but you do have a cancellation policy. So if somebody books an appointment or like a regular appointment, they're going to be there for an hour and a half, two hours out of a schedule and they no show what, how does that work? If they're, if they're not sick, they just, you know, they just blow it off. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we believe in second chances in our salon. So we give everybody a free pass once, you know, like just because so there's a policy, but the first one, like they get a free pass. Definitely. Uh, got it. Yeah, so we don't want to start like a, here's the threshold of like, you have to have this horrible thing happen to miss your appointment. Like right. we don't it has to be very serious. It cannot be just, you had to take your dog for a walk. Exactly. Exactly. And same with like second policies with the hair redo. Like if for some reason we missed that on the first opportunity, we would like a second opportunity too. So we always want to have a second chance for things. Um, but then after that, they are responsible for 50% of their appointment fee. Um, and then to book a future appointment, they would just need to prepay that appointment slot. Got it. So, okay. So the good to know. So like the first one, they get a grace period and like, okay, totally understand life happens. Second one, just so you know, there's a 50% reschedule or a 50% if you know show, uh, and then it can go, it can kind of escalate from there. But to your point, you don't start out with a, Hey, nice to meet you. Come down for a consultation. By the way, if you don't show up, it'll cost you half the appointment. <laughs> like we're not in that sort of mode. No. Not at all. <laughs> no. And, I, and by the way, I know there are salons out there that do charge for consultations, Doug, right? You've heard of some salons that do charge for consultations as well, yeah? Yeah, and so we actually, we charge for wedding consultations. So if someone mm. comes in for a wedding consultation, that because that's a longer consultation, you're going to actually play with different looks and stuff. Uh, so that one is charged because we want to go ahead and get 
a level of commitment uh, on that. But the regular ones we don't. But there are people that do. And I think you know right. it's one you know promoting the quality of your uh, uh, consultation and what you're looking to get out of it. I know uh, some people charge for a consultation, and then if you come and get your hair done, you can use that towards your uh, your hair price. So yeah, you know, that, yeah, and I would just say. Ways of doing it. I think you just need to find in your environment, in your area, what works best. I mean, don't solve a problem that you don't have. Uh, right. Sometimes people hear other people are doing this somewhere else, and oh, you I'm don't really do. have that problem. And you start to say, so don't solve problems you don't have. But if you do have a problem, then you need to look at what are some ways that we could overcome this that works for everybody. Yeah, I would also throw out there, Helen, for you too, just for my opinion. Don't solve a problem because you're pissed. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Like. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're not going to show up? Then I'm going to start charging for consultations. Yeah. Like you, you don't you don't want to live in this spot where you're making rules because you're angry. You want to make rules. And I think, you know, April and Lindsay, you guys do such a great job of this. Like every time we talk to you, you're smiley, you're happy, you love on people. Like you guys live in that space. And what I love is like I said, oh, do you charge for consultation because people don't show up? You weren't like, well, look, we believe in second chances. Like we want to give people the benefit of the doubt. We understand they're sick. Like when you come from that place of grace, race instead of that place of, you know, frustrated, angry, how dare you not show up on me, like all that stuff. Because I I don't think there's any good rules that come out of anger when you put them in place. And you're like, oh, well, you know, my staff doesn't sell retail. So I'm going to charge them $10 every time they forget to sell retail. Well, nobody's going to like that, like punishment for doing it. They're just going to leave and say, you know what, I'll find another salon. I'll find another place to work. I'll find another place to go, especially when there's penalties for just, you know, not doing what you think I should do. So Helen, I, I hope, the, hope that was helpful for you. If it was, do me a favor and comment helpful. And if that was helpful for anybody else, do me a favor and comment helpful. Uh, ladies, back to kind of you guys telling us a little bit more about the holidays. What other things do you do in December? As things get stressful, as things get crazy, are there any like, and this is gonna sound weird, but are there any odd things that you guys do? Like somebody, you know, are there, are there things that you guys do that are just like, you're probably not gonna see this at a normal salon, but you guys go a little bit wacky. Are there any like secret things that you guys do? Oh man, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. I can't think I'm of anything. looking for that thing to sell you guys out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you're like, oh, just kidding. We both dress up as Santa Claus and put on giant white beards and go mm-hmm. runner. I, you never know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just curious. Are there any things that you guys do? They dress up for our holiday open house that we just had. Um, And so that was pretty fun. It just like brings a lot of holiday cheer. And we have like little headbands that we picked up from Dollar General that are real nice. (laughs) Dollar (laughs) General? You know them Dollar Generals. Uh, Well, so tell me about your holiday open house because I think a lot, that's a great thing. I think a lot of people canceled their holiday open house because they were like, look, there's no way we can do it. What, What did you guys do? How did you still pull off a holiday open house? Yeah, I mean, we just busted out some extra sanitizer and just, you know, made sure that we had enough space for everybody. And um, just, it was great. We had um, obviously a lower turnout than usual, but we also had a drive-through option that people could purchase either over the phone or on our on our online platform. Um, and we would run it out to them, which was super nice. Um, we're getting ready to do a spinoff of that to just because we love our guests so much we want to be able to celebrate even those who weren't able to be here so we're going to kind of do a fun little thing coming up if you follow us um, on our social media you'll be able to see the fun things we have in store for that oh see you guys are good at teasers too look at that they're like we're not going to tell you what it is but if you follow us on social media by the way at (laughs) platinumcompany.com uh i mean that's part of it and and by the way you know like i think you guys do a really good job of doing this is make sure that that holiday magic is still there like to your point i love this idea of doing like drive-through pickups or buying online and like you know making sure that if guests can't come to the salon that you've still got an option for them and making sure that they still feel special doug what, what are the questions you want to ask about this uh december january game that we're about to play in the salon world here well i would like to get their input on what they do to make sure that january isn't the expected you know everybody, all wah, january's wah, so wah, much, right so right. so what are y'all doing on an intentional level uh, with your staff and everything to make sure that your January is going to be one of your better months instead of one of your slower months? Well, we are actually running a pre-book incentive for our guests. Um, if they pre-book their next two appointments, they can win some AirPods. So that's oh, awesome. All right. And the stylist also wins the AirPods. 
Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay, so you are okay through the month of November and December. You're running pre-book your next two appointments, mm -hmm. and then you, the stylist and the guest, can win a set of AirPods. By the way, I love making sure that uh, that the stylist and the guest gets a prize. So I think it's good for them to both be playing because they both have to participate, right? The stylist has got to yeah. ask, the guest has got to book. Like they both have to play. I think that's a great incentive. And again, now more than ever, a pre-book incentive for the next two appointments, not just don't forget to pre-book, but asking them for their next two plus appointments. Super, super good. Anything else you guys are doing intentionally to make sure that January is great for you guys? Yeah, so in addition to, you know, just setting it up well with the pre-books, um, and then in the consultation, just having, creating that look that takes, you know, like how their look will evolve over the next couple of months. Um, mm -hmm. Aside from that, we in the past have done some fun incentives in January, like with the new you, um, new year, new you. And so we do like a makeover competition, um, just, you know, posting so many before and afters. Um, it just seems like that's a good time of year that people are ready for a total new look. Um, and mm. it's usually been cold no matter where people are and they're getting stir crazy and yeah. uh, they're ready for a new look. So, um, just setting that up and being intentional with our social media so that we do stay engaged and interactive with people, um, and are able to welcome in some new people. It's harder to fit a whole lot of new people in, in December, you always want room, but then, sure. um, just really looking for those new people and being intentional with helping them create a new look in the new year. That, that's really good. And I think to your point, I mean, for crying out loud, switching from 2020 to 2021, which we're about, I can't even believe that we were going to say that. I felt like we literally just started 2020 and then, oh yeah, quarantine, right? Like all in pandemic <laughs> and all this shenanigans, right? And then it was like a blink and we're at the end of the year. Uh, but I think to your point, I think lots of people are kind of getting in that stir crazy, you know, sort of scenario. I saw uh, just yesterday, I saw like an Axe body spray commercial on television. That tells you what type of quality television I'm watching, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but I was watching this Axe commercial and they showed some guy like in quarantine it said quarantine day number 235 and then it was like he opened up and got to go outside and they're like you know it was this whole uh don't worry we'll help you get back to normal and it was just that idea of like you know getting back out there and refreshing and renewing and being ready to go and i think you know if you guys kind of borrow from what some of the you know larger advertisers are doing and paying attention to people are ready for something new they're ready for something fresh they want to feel like it's a new year and if you make sure that you're talking about that on your social media and you're having those conversations and to your point of like having that makeover contest i think that's a great time to do a makeover contest come the beginning of the year it's like hey by the way let's get you looking right for the holidays and then we're just gonna do a full refresh come january and then planning out a look that, and I'm just recapping what you said, right? Is like planning out this look that will take a couple of sessions to evolve into because then again, you can you can do more than just like, okay, let's just do one quick little appointment here and really make sure that you have a, an entire plan for them going into next year, not just that. That That's really, really good. By the way, if that's good stuff, guys, do me a favor and comment in the comment section below, good stuff. Uh, April and Lindsay, let's pretend that uh, you were only going to have one more holiday season where you had to like blow it out the top and it was going to be over the top. Amazing. What would you sneak in? What one thing would you do? What would you tell one other Solano they could do to make their holiday season the best season they've ever had right now? Oh gosh. I mean, I think really just get intentional with like what your mission is and just try to serve your people as big and amazing as possible and just give back. Like so many people I think ask all the time on social media and in person, but really I think if you can just switch your thought process to like, how can I give, how can I give to my community? Um, you know, through like we've done things in the past, like giving back to our local food bank, a percentage of our sales. Like how can I give to our community? How can I even give in small ways with like little videos on tutorials, on looks for holiday parties, you know? Yeah. Um, and instead of asking for so many things, like giving and giving a really great consultation that builds a look over several visits um, and helps set them up for success with how often they want to visit the salon. Um, and, you know, just kind of some education behind that. So lots of layers, but then just having a great attitude every day and serving your team well, not, um, it's not just only about you and not, <laughs> you know, it's about True. the team. And um, if you can serve your team well, then they can serve your guests well. And the ripple effects are huge from that, I think. 
Yeah, guys, I mean, I, I think you guys exemplify this of all the people that we know inside the academy. You guys always have great smiles. You're always super serving to other people inside the academy. And I, I'm sure it's the exact same way inside your salon. I hope you guys get that, uh, that are paying attention, either listening to the podcast or watching us online, is that if you can serve your staff, your staff will serve your guests. And what can you do to serve your community? Because when you come from that place of service during the holidays, instead of, hey, come on down, we got this holiday sale, come check it out, right? I don't know why I sound like George Burns from like Simpsons, <laughs> there, but, but the idea is like, get yourself out of that moment of, of like, how do I take from people over the holiday and look at it as how do I give? And it'll pay back a hundred times over. And I think you guys said it, you said the word attitude. Lindsay, you said the word attitude is if you have the right attitude with your staff, your staff will have the right attitude with your guests. Your guests will come in with the right attitude and it puts you in a different, put you in a different place. If this was helpful to you guys, do me a favor and comment with the word attitude. And as we get into the holiday, we're going to get you guys more and more tips about how to make sure that you guys can have the best holiday season you've ever had and how to make sure that December uh, is not dangerous. So thank you so much for hanging out on the podcast. April, Lindsay, thank you for being here. Doug Campbell, as always, thank you for being here. And uh, we hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. We'll see you guys soon. Cool. Thank Thanks, you. guys. See you later. Thanks for listening to the Evo Revo podcast. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe, leave us a review, and you can always get more information, including show notes and the video episodes at evorevopodcast.com.